hello lovely people and welcome back to my channel. I'm going to do a VR today. I haven't done a VR for ages and it's VR to Nancy over at Paper Moon Tarot. Now Nancy's t uh, channel is quite new so if you haven't found her yet then go along and give her some love and um give her a subscribe she's she's fabulous and she's come up with a brilliant new tag called tarot on the menu now she said it's kind of inspired by dating the tarot because when you date the tarot you might go out for a meal remember those days when we went out when we went out for meals when we went out for restaurants actually when we dated can you remember I can't, but let's just pretend we can. So let's take our decks on a date into the exquisite world of cuisine. Category number one, your favourite appetiser. A deck to whet your appetite. Now, we're talking food. And for me, a deck that always speaks to me about food is the... Uh, Nicoletta Ciccoli tarot. It was also one of my very first tarots. It's a deck that I really love. It's certainly one that after I bought it very early on in my tarot deck acquisition year, I thought to myself, um, yeah, I want to get more decks. These are the backs. And it is a deck that speaks of um, food. It has spoke to me about food issues and health issues every time I've used it. In fact, I did for a while exclusively use it for chatting about issues like that. Food does feature in this deck. You've got vegetables and cakes and sweeties throughout it. I just love it. It's one that I haven't used for a while. I did use it a lot. Um, for a few months actually it got used quite a bit oh, I love that card I think that card's brilliant but I haven't used it for a while and while I am thinking about this VR I think I might actually start using this deck again so that's my appetizer deck a deck that once you've bought it and you've started using it, it might get you thinking about food just because of the imagery. It might get you wanting to explore more unusual decks. It might get you reaching for candy canes and sweeties. Who knows? And it certainly speaks of food to me. So that is my appetizer deck, my favorite appetizer, the Nicoletta Ciccoli Tarot. Then we've got category number two, the French Bistro, an elegant or romantic deck. This gives me memories of going to Paris with rainbow hair and seeing the Eiffel Tower for the very first time. I can remember I walked around a corner and it was just suddenly there in front of me and I stood in the middle of this bustling crowd and just burst into tears in the middle of the pavement because I was so overcome by how beautiful the Eiffel Tower was. It felt to me like looking at a structure made from lace. I just loved it. I can remember a day spent round the Eiffel Tower taking photos of it and watching it light up at night and some of the best food I've ever eaten was in Paris. Just amazing food. So when I think of Paris I think about those memories. The Eiffel Tower was dark like black lace, there weren't many colours, um, it was very elegant and for me I just think of this deck when I think of those memories, the mystical dream tarot. So the backs look like this, very elegant, very simple. And the colour palette in this deck is also very simple. French style is not multicoloured, it is not flamboyant, it is understated with a limited palette of colour. 
it's simple but it's beautiful it will stand the test of time and it's elegant so my mystical dream tarot is my french bistro with beautiful waiters that bring you the food you want even though the narcissist across the table from you demanded you order something different but the waiters take over and bring you the meal that they knew that you wanted to order but were told no this is the deck that reminds me of standing in awe under the Eiffel Tower, crying with how beautiful the structure was. This is my deck of narcissists discovered. This is Paris for me. So that's my French Bistro. And then we've got category three, where are we going now? We're going to a spicy dish, a deck that adds a little bit of zing to everything. And for this, it's the Osho Zen Tarot, which is a deck that it almost made my meat and potatoes deck, but it does have a bit of a spicy element to it. It's got a bit of a kick. It doesn't quite follow the rules you would expect. It likes to shake things up a bit. It even comes with its own scandals. But it mixes so beautifully with so many other dishes. Put a bit of spice in lots of readings and it always works if you pull this deck out. It has a very sharp spicy sword suit or clouds but I love it. If I want a bit of spice <laughs> in my readings doesn't matter what other deck is in play the Osho Zen is always happy to jump in and spice things up a little bit. So that is my spicy dish, the Osho Zen. And then we've got category four, Little Italy, a deck that brings to mind a taste tempting pasta. So Italy, memories of Venice and glass, beautiful glass with patterns in and glass factories and art and masks and music and balconies with nightly thunderstorms and lightning and beautiful weather, beautiful ice creams and food and beautiful men. Just Italy was a place that my heart just loved and it yearns to go back to. And for my Italy deck, all of those feelings are summed up by my dreams of Gaia Tarot. This is fancy and arty and wacky enough for the Venice canals. These are masked creatures you would expect to see in a gondola. This is a ridiculously expensive cafe overlooking beautiful squares. This is dilapidated beauty at every turn. Set against jeweled art and extravagance and glassware and the water of canals. This is beautiful men and beautiful women with lovely energy. Italy was full for me of such friendly people. 
So for me, this deck really does make me think about Italy and Venice canals and masks and art and translucent coloured glass and bridges over canals and nights spent with lovers that were an important part of my life back then. Yeah, this is Italy. And then we come to category five, the meat and potatoes, the trusty main meal deck that sticks to your ribs. And for me, this has to be the light seers. When I am panicking that I'm forgetting cards again in my early days of learning, this is the deck that will always say, no, you've got this, you know what you're doing. Come on, you know these. This is home. This is Memories of Crows and Memories of Hope and Memories of Trauma. It's all here in this deck and Memories of New Paths opening up. Memories of Ocean Hideaways <laughs> and Walking Away from What Doesn't Serve You. This is the sexiest devil in tarot. Yeah, this deck is meat and potatoes. It's very loved by a lot of people, including me, because it works. It's beautiful. And I love it. So, the Lightseer's Tarot, my meat and potatoes, or my corn and potatoes. And then, of course, with every spectacular meal with a loved one, you have to have the right wine. So category six, the right wine, an oracle that perfectly complements your tarot meal. Well, of course, that always depends on what the tarot meal is for what oracle. So I tried to think about this as a red and a white wine. So one oracle for a red wine and one for a white wine. Now my red wine deck is this one, which is the witches oracle. It's not, I haven't had it very long, but it feels warm, it feels earthy, it feels like a deck that would have sat in an oak barrel to mature. It feels like it's come from the earth. A deep peppery red, a merlot. It is a deck that I have found works with quite a few decks actually, which is all what you always want for a good red wine something that will mix with quite a few meals and this is one of those decks red wine is my favorite but you always want one that doesn't give you a headache and this one doesn't give you a headache this one is great to work with so that is the witch's oracle my favourite red wine. And for a white wine, the Literary Witches Oracle. Both witches for my oracles. Not intentionally done, but there you go. And this oracle is spectacular. The cardstock is glorious. It's got that linen feel but it's also got lots of cards and spell ingredients that are open and airy, like a good white. 
a single ingredient like a single grape. Let's not mix those grapes. This is a beautiful white wine that mixes with a lot of different meals. And I love it. It's elegant. It's curious. It brings out quite bizarre elements of readings when you mix it in. It always enhances, never takes over, and it's fabulous. So the Literary Witches Oracle is my favourite white wine. Category 7, the fancy dessert. Cards that remind you of an elaborate wedding cake. And for me, that's Christoph James's Rain Coast Pocket Tarot. This deck is my soul as a soul language. It's colourful. It's multi-dimensional. It's a many-tiered jeweled wedding cake, full of colour, full of extravagance, full of things going on, layered. So interesting. And I love it. This is also a little deck that, like a good wine, can be mixed into lots of other readings and it's fabulous. And this was my screensaver on my phone for months because I loved it so much. A swan, ravens and octopus tentacles all in one card. The best cake ever and everybody's got to love a good tarot and cake analogy like lovers they go together so that's it that is my wedding cake fancy dessert deck so thank you nancy for this lovely tag for tarot on the menu i will put nancy's original video down below and all the links join in it's a lovely tag so join in if you would like to Go and say hi to Nancy too. I thought it was really fun. And thanks for watching guys. And I will see you next time. Bye.